Welcome back to Market Sense. Now, President Cyril Ramaphosa decided to keep what is a, the steady hand of Tito Mboweni on the country's teller. But would South Africa not perhaps be better served by more bold and steps in policy development and fiscal steps is perhaps the question. And would the man now sitting at number two in National Treasury perhaps not offer a more fresh outlook while garnering the respect of a nation in need of a big boost in its economy. Is David Masondo, who is formally deployed to head up the OR Tambo School of Leadership, the man to bring new initiatives to the country's bank balance? Abdullah Varachi, a global strategist, uh, but also faculty member at Gibbs, helps us unpack this uh, a little bit further. Thank you so much for the time. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Your sentiments initially to start off with regards to that cabinet announcement yesterday? I think it created a lot of angst in South Africa. We've had these three, four days and lots mm. of Totorati speaking about the fact. But I think <laughs> the reality is we've got to understand the complexity of being able to put a cabinet together. Yeah. I think the president spoke yesterday about the fact that we're reducing the size of the cabinet, but it's obviously a process and it's a journey that we're on. Yeah. And so I think there were many challenges internally within the ANC in terms of the position of the deputy president, the integrity commission and the complication around yeah. the meetings that needed to happen last weekend. And so I think by and large, it's a, a great reflection in terms of the ability to put together the multiple uh, factors that come into putting a cabinet together. Yeah. Uh, the fact that yesterday there were consultations with many players within the multi-stakeholder environment, including the tripartite alliance. And I think the fact that no bad, nobody within the environment in South Africa was able to leak who was going to be in that cabinet <laughs> is a reflection of the choices The taken. president made sure of that one by calling <laughs> everyone very late as well in the day. Sure. Look, Let's, let's focus a little bit more specifically on that finance committee and, and perhaps more specifically National Treasury. You get Tito Mboweni still heading it up, and then you have David Masondo. Sure. Now, you can start wherever you like, but what do you make of those two appointments and one being, of course, a reappointment? I think uh, Dr. Masondo is an interim measure as Deputy, uh, Deputy Finance Minister. Mm. I think it's an opportunity to be able to get into the seat as Deputy Minister in Finance. I think uh, Minister Tito Mboweni has insinuated a number of times, both publicly and privately, yeah. that this is an interim measure for him. I think we've seen in the last two days that he's got other passions. He loves cooking. <laughs> he loves spending time out in Limpopo. Uh, I think he's had a checkered career. Yeah. And I think he'll spend a lot of the next 12 to 24 months handing over the baton across to Dr. David Masondo. So so you see David Masondo taking over as finance minister sometime soon? Without a doubt. I think it's an opportunity for them to work together. I think there's a sound team in the bureaucracy and the administration of National Treasury, both at a DG, DDG and chief director level. Is it level. still the same way, though? I mean, we, we, used to say that, we used to say that a while ago with, with Finance Minister Praveen Gordon sitting there, Tlantla Nene sitting there, even with Malusi Kigaba sitting there, we still believed in that. Is that still the case? Of course, I think uh, there's a strong team at uh, Treasury. Uh, we've got a strong Director General who effectively is the accounting officer yeah. in the National Department of Treasury. Uh, and I think we also have to look at it within the much more broader context in terms of how the economic cluster has been realigned. I think the fact that we've now got uh, Minister Ebrahim Patel who takes over what we would call a super ministry, uh, this bringing together of DTI, which in itself is already a large ministry together with economic yeah. development where he served before. Uh, and so there's this realignment in terms of the economic cluster. I think the reality is that Dr. David Masondo has uh, a number of uh, interest areas in terms of taking over from a treasury perspective, mm. but I think he's demonstrated capacity and capability. And the fact you opened up by speaking about his role in terms of the OR Tambo School of Leadership, he continues to hold that yeah. role, by the How way. How will the market then view him? Because that, that becomes the issue, right? I mean, many times we've said that uh, without credentials, so to speak, in, in that department, in that sector, th the market tends to look down on you a little bit. Sure. Will that be the same case here? Well, I think the market reaction today has been fantastic. I think it's been a measured response to be able to say that uh, it's an interesting cabinet. I think we've got a number of deck chairs that have shifted, but by and large, there's been a retention of some of the uh, history that we have, the legacy of people like Tito Mboweni. Mm. And so I think the steady hand is still there. But it is important that government recognizes the role of young people, the role of new talent coming into the administration yeah. and taking the mantelpiece of political leadership. I often speak to the fact that in the 1994 cabinet of President Mandela, we had a number of cabinet ministers under the age of 40, including Tito Mbueni, yeah. including Vali Musa. Sure. Uh, and so we had a number of young ministers, Jay Naidu, who was the minister in the presidency. We forget about the fact that President Mandela had an important role to play in terms of creating a next bench of leadership. Mm. 
And so I'm excited when we got ministers like Ronald Lamola, like Dr. David Masondo, who I think will be important to be able to continue this legacy of leadership yeah. that we've had since 1994. Yeah, I spoke to my market analyst a little bit earlier, Chantel Marx, just about how the proof of the pudding is going to be in the eating, though. And it's all great to speak about a great CV, but the hard grafting and the hard work now needs to be put in. Do you think we can trust, as a country who's been through so much already, that indeed this is the cabinet that we have to unfortunately believe in, but it will, of course, do the job? I think you've hit it on the nail, right? The proof of the pudding is uh, the proof of the, the the pudding is there, right? Yeah. It's how we actually look at the next five years. How do we hold this uh, cabinet accountable and the executive accountable? But I think it's beyond that. Uh, I think we've become a very headline-driven society. So every day we get overwhelmed by the headlines in terms of what's going on, and we put too much of an emphasis in terms of political leadership. I think we must talk about civic leadership. Yes. What is the role of self? What is my leadership role in terms of driving levels of employment? How do I contribute in terms of economic growth? If I have privilege, what role do I play to be able to share that privilege to be able to address issues of employment? Mm. So we know that the Ministry of Labor has now been widened to be able to talk about the Ministry of Employment. I think what's going to happen is we're going to expect the responsibility of employability to rest on one individual, one ministry, yes. one department. And so we defer the leadership mantle towards political leadership. Political leadership is important, but it must, must be appreciated within the much broader context of leadership. Yeah. So the question for me as an individual, as a faculty member, as a business school is, what is my individual leadership role? How do I contribute in the field of academia yeah. to be able to contribute to some of the challenges that we have in the country? Employment and unemployment, the issue of income inequality, yeah. the issue of poverty. How do you, as somebody who's a media professional, play a role in terms of contributing to some of these issues? And I think if we can change the dominant narrative away from the reliance totally on political leadership, to self. I, I think we'll have a big impact in this country. I must end things off, unfortunately, but I must ask you and, and perhaps take it back a little bit to David Masondo and ask you what exactly does he bring to the table that our viewers can look at and say, we need to trust that man as the deputy to Dito Mboweni and hopefully, as you say, to take over at a later stage. So I think it's important to look at the history, to look at his career, to look at some of the work that he's done. He previously served as an MEC. He then came through and uh, Premier David Makura and Gauteng mm. uh, entrusted him with leading the Automotive Industry Development Corporation. So he played an active role there. Uh, he has a PhD and so academically he's gone on a career path. Uh, but I think he's also played an active role in terms of the policy realignment of the ANC. We see in the role that he played at the NGC in terms of yeah. uh, the policy movement of the ANC. And so I, I think he's recognized as one of the up and coming young leaders in the ANC, but he's also re uh, recognized as an academic in the ANC. And so in my interactions with Dr. Masondo, it's been always healthy, it's been welcoming, and I've loved the robust engagement that I've had with him. Yeah. I think we must be measured, uh, and I think uh, we've got to be careful and hold our leaders accountable. But I have lots of confidence in terms of where we go. Uh, I think we have to think about how do we collectively now move forward yeah. beyond politics. Cautious optimism? How's that? Spot on, 100%. Okay. Perfect. Abdullah Varashia there, a faculty member at the Gordon Institute of Business Science, perhaps giving his thoughts and some sentiments then. National Treasury, not necessarily under new leadership on a whole, but certainly bringing in a newcomer uh, in some respects there with Dr. David Masang, uh, Masondo there as Deputy Finance.